Morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to this workshop on um, international data. Um, so I've been working in and around aggregate data now since um, 1995, which is a long time ago. Um, initially, we were all based at the University of Manchester, and then we got kind of gobbled up by this big entity called JISC, who you may never have heard of, but you will all have used their services because JISC provides the um, the internet that all the universities run on and lots and lots of other services that you probably don't know about. Um, so what we're going to cover today, we're going to do a, a very brief introduction about the UK data service. Um, and then the main bulk of the presentation will be about uh, international macro data. And we'll give you examples of the data and tell you about each of the different providers. Um, and we'll try and make this as uh, interactive as possible. So I'll, I will try and do as much as I can live. And if you want to, um, if you want to follow along, then you can do that. And there's all sorts of little bits and bobs and and and, and some uh, a little um, question for you to answer at the end, which will get you to use uh, some of our data. So the UK Data Service uh, is a, a distributed service run. Um, funded by the Economic and Social Research Council. And it's it's mainly based down at the UK, uh, the, um, the data archive at the uh, University of Essex. Um, but then we have sort of centers of, of don't want to say excellence, um, um, expertise at uh, different parts of uh, the UK. So we have uh, some people at the University of Edinburgh, uh, UCL, and uh, University of Southampton as well. Um, and we all come together to provide um, different parts of the service. JISC in Manchester, we um, look after the aggregate data. So that's um, the international data we're talking about today, but also uh, UK um, census and population data as well. Uh, we are a single point of access, so you can just go to our web service and web website. And from there, we can we, you can uh, find all the data you want and, and be moved out to all the different services. And we provide support training and guidance, obviously, because you're on one of the training courses. We have lots and lots of different types of data. Uh, national surveys, uh, the international data banks, uh, census from 1971 up to 2022. Uh, we have uh, business data and we have quality qualitative data. So that's sort of the quotes the more human side of things. So that might be videos or interviews, that sort of thing. We also have data that's been deposited by researchers. So if you are funded by the uh, the SRC, you are obliged to um, offer any data that you produce to ourselves. And then we will catalog that and make that available to other people. Our website, obviously, if you've booked on this course, you know all about this. So I don't really have to tell you so much about it. But uh, we do have um, a good learning hub there, which will take you into all sorts of different bits of information about the um, what we offer and, and, and some help on that. So the main thing that we want to talk about is the international macro data. So it's it's macro, so it's not it's not small level de uh, details. It's 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 large. So we're talking about country, sometimes regional level, but mainly it's, it's country level. And the data banks typically contain time series data. So that's uh, um, data that's published at um, a, a specific period, maybe uh, annually, sometimes quarterly, and also sometimes monthly. And it's produced by uh, gold standard international government organizations. All the um, all the data that we offer is is free at the point of use for staff and students at UK universities, and most of it is open, so it can be used by uh, everybody. We've got data at the moment from four um, data providers. You'll notice that one of them is in very small letters. Um, that's because we currently don't have any data loaded on our systems by U the United Nations. We will be getting to that, and I'll, I'll, I'll make lots of excuses and, and apologies. Um, in the past year, we have had to move off our existing um, software and servers because of um, safety reasons. 
and we've had to move on to a new a new system which we are we have loaded the most popular data sets on there but we have also got a huge project to load census data on there um and we are devoting most of our time to that in the new year we will get round to uploading all our um, remaining um, international data so these international organizations have the capacity to produce very high quality data sets um, they've got a presence in every country in the world and a power to create international standards to create statistical infrastructures and provide technical assi in technical assistance uh, we have uh, licensing agreements with these organisations so that the data they produce are free to the UK academic community. So the sorts of data we hold cover uh, um, an immense amount of, of themes, um, trade, industry, employment, um, human development uh, and demography. And many more, as you can see here on this slide. Um, as I've said earlier, all our data uh, are freely open to, to all, not just academics, but to all users. Um, data is delivered over the web via uh, an interface called the Data Explorer. Uh, it's all searchable and you can download in formats such as XLS for Excel and CSV, which can be opened in just about any package. We also have a um, a developer API, that's a, an application programming interface. That's for people who want to do machine to machine um, connections. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, shortly. So we work um, in cooperation with something called the SISCC. Uh, statistical, st st I'll put my teeth back in. Statistical Information Systems Collaboration Community. The primary member of that is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, uh, but it has uh, many, many members. This is just a, um, a smattering of them. So we've got ASTAT from South Tyrol, the ABS from Australia, the National Bank of Belgium, uh, Stats Estonia, Stats New Zealand, um, INS from Tunisia, um, uh, Statec from Luxembourg, um, all sorts of uh, different um, statistical organisations around the world. Uh, the UK Data Service is the only um, academic organisation that's joined um, the SISCC. Um, the UK is quite um, quite unique. I shouldn't say quite unique. Is unique in that we have a, um, a centrally funded um, data service for academia. Um, we partner with Eurostat, which is the statistical office for the uh, European Union, and Paris 21, which is the Partnership in Statistics for Development in the 21st Century. Um, <clears throat> and we work with them on creating standards. And as you can see, we've got a, a URL. This is our current URL for our um, Data Explorer. Uh, uh, we will shortly be moving over to a new name, but that name will remain live for a while and it, it will automatically um, move you over to the to the new URL. I'll talk a bit about that later. The SISCC, um, together we manage the creation of um, a, a software suite called DotStat, uh, which um, has the Data Explorer, um, the core services, and the lifecycle manager. So lifecycle manager is for the creation of data. So the these organizations such as the United Nations um, in the form of UNICEF and OECD, they are using DotStat to design and deliver their data from day one. They're putting it into DotStat core, which is um, the data center for the data sets. And this is um, this is SDMX compliance. And we'll talk a bit about SDMX later. You don't really know to, need to know about SDMX, but that, that word will keep cropping up because it's so important to what 
um, statistical organizations are now doing. And then we use Data Explorer to expose that data to yourself. So what you'll interact with is, is the Data Explorer. And we're not the only people using the Data Explorer. There, there are iterations uh, around the world. So I can go and show you, hopefully, uh, the Pacific Data Hub, which is the, um, the Statistical Institute for the Pacific States community. Hopefully, we'll get to see the Pacific Data Hub. Come on. I might have to share that screen. Let's just see. It's a long way away. OK, I shall just. So this is stats.pacificdata the organization you'll you might notice that there are some some similarities with our own interface we can go to statistics from um ins in tunisia as well i'm hoping you can see this so um this looks different to um the pacific data Ex um, hub and, and our own interface but behind it is running uh, dot stat so we talked about stmx um this is a statistical data and metadata exchange it's um it's a way of combining data and metadata in a way that uh, describes it in a, a standards compliant way uh, so that anyone or anything that understands stmx um, has all they need to recreate and understand the data um, stmx is sponsored by um, international organizations such as eurostat um, the un the world bank and the imf um, and it's an iso standard method for describing statistical data um, <clears throat> there are lots of free tools um, for using SDMX. So there's a Power BI connector, uh, there's an Excel add-in, and they're all available for free from the Eurostat um, website. There's a link to that on, on this presentation. I will show you what it looks like. It doesn't look, um, it doesn't look exciting or interesting, and it's not really designed for human um, use. It's, it's designed really for computer programs to, to view it. Am I sharing the right thing there? I don't know, it's difficult to say. I'm gonna stop that and I'm gonna share it again. Make sure I'm sharing the right one. Okay, so this is, this is SDMX and it contains everything you need to know about setting up the metadata behind this, this particular bit of data. When it um, when it catches up. So this is data from the OECD's economic outlook, and that SDMX describes things like the time periods that are available, combined measure of preference, uh, measure and the reference areas, that sort of thing. There is another file then that goes with that that has all the data in it as well, and they work together. Go back to the presentation. Now, if you want to use SDMX. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but all you need to know is that underneath what you can see is SDMX data. What does it look like when you're not looking at the SDMX? So it, it just looks like a table of data. Um, here's an example of what it looks like. So um, we have um, countries and uh, regions, uh, metropolitan areas along the, um, the left-hand side. Uh, we've got uh, gears along the top and data in the middle. <clears throat> and we've got a, a couple of different, oh, three different indicators on display. So we've got physicians per thousand people, health expenditure per capita, and government health expenditure. Um, and at the top, we've also got a bit of information about the table. So we've selected 1.1 million data points um, but it's an incomplete table because there are there are more data points available. As I said before, we will be changing this address later in the year and we'll be going to dataexplorer.uk, dataservice.is.uk, but the old web address will be, continue to be usable for a while and we'll also redirect users to the new address. <laughs> so the World Bank um, has allowed us to host four databases we only have the most popular one in at the moment. So that's the World Development Indicators, but International Debt Statistics, the Africa Development Indicators, and the Sub-National Population Database will be going in uh, next year. And we will hopefully be expanding that with, with um, a, a selection of other World Bank databases as well. So the World Bank collects data on all aspects of human development. Um, the 
data are annual. Uh, they're designed to be comparable between countries. And all the data is um, open access. And the World Development Indicators um, covers about 200 countries. Um, the data starts in 1960. Uh, it's one of our most widely used uh, data sets and it's very widely cited uh, as well. Um, it provides a broad picture of um, poverty trends, uh, development indicators, uh, the use of environmental resources, performance of the public sector, um, the labour market, uh, infrastructure, health, education and gender. So we've got a little question. So which country had the largest proportion of women in parliament during 2020? So if you open up a web browser and go to www.menti.com and use this the code 8658463, you should be able to see a little poll and we'll have a look and see what people are thinking. See if anyone's voted yet. No one's voted yet. I will say that the, the selection of countries are the, these are the the countries with the, the highest percentage of people of women in parliament. So that one person that said Rwanda. Um Bolivia, 46% are women. Cuba, 53%. Iceland are 38%. Rwanda, 61%. And Sweden, 46%. Um, the UK in 2020 was 33%, uh, which is just slightly higher than the average for the EU, which is 32%. So that's this is the information that we have in, it, the sort of information we have in uh, the World Development Indicators. So this is, um, a table on um, individuals using the internet, so access to internet, essentially. Um, we've chosen the last five years. You'll notice that the, this data is from 2022, but the data only goes up to 2020 because it because the the um, the data takes a while to um, to collect and then deliver. The, the data sets usually lag behind uh, the release date by a year or two. And unfortunately, we are lagging behind as well because we, we, we've had to um, devote most of our time to inputting census data at the moment. So this is the, um, the answer to the question we were asking. Um, as you can see, 61% for Rwanda, uh, way out in front. So the, one of the next ones we'll be putting up from the World Bank is the International Debt Statistics. Um, this is a global database on debt and aid, uh, and it focuses on financial flows, um, trends in external debt and interest payments. Um, there are about 200 time series indicators in there, um, and the data starts in 1970 and goes up to 2022. Uh, not for all countries. Some countries um, don't start in 1970. Some countries have breaks. Some countries come and go. Uh, but most of them have uh, a good long um, time series. Um, and they, uh, they report on um, the pipeline uh, data for scheduled debt service payments on existing commitments. From the IMF, at the moment, we have four data sets in from them. We will be looking at the balance of payments later. Balance of payments is an absolutely huge data set. Um, that looks at flows of money between over 200 countries to over 200 countries. So it's, it's, um, it's unilateral, um, but we will get around to that in the new year. So the IMF, uh, the primary purpose of, purpose of the fund is to maintain international financial, financial stability. And the data it, reflects, uh, data it collects reflects that theme. Uh, the fund collects detailed macroeconomic data on all of its member countries. Uh, it's watching out for financial crises and balance of payments difficulties. Um, <clears throat> and these five data sets collectively provide a global picture of economic development and international trade over the last 50 years. We'll take a look at the, uh, the IFS, the International Financial Statistics. Um, the IFS is the principal statistical publication uh, of the IMF and it's the standard resource 
through all aspects of international and domestic finance. It has been produced every month since 1948, and we have monthly, quarterly, and annual data for over 200 countries. Um, it's, a, it's a reference publication, so the exchange rates uh, in the IFS are used as a, a basis for conversion for the UN databanks, databanks and the World Bank series. Uh, there are three sections, so there's country tables, the data is fairly raw and unprocessed. Uh, it's not designed for making comparisons, uh, but it is designed for, for countries to benchmark their own progress over time. They pull those more comparable series into the world tables. This also has commodity prices for oil, coffee, gold, and wheat. And we also have um, a, uh, a regions um, table as well. So this is a sort of example of data we can get out of the IFS. This is um, essentially the price of gold from uh, 1950 up to, I think that's 2024. As you can see, things very stable up until the mid 70s, possibly due to the oil crisis. Um, and then in the mid 2000s, the price of gold just takes off and then about 2010, drops down again. I wonder what happened around about 2009, 2010. Uh, but then it's 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 picked up and, and it's uh, it's at an all time right now. The Direction of Trade uh, data banks uh, contain data on the value of exports and imports between each country and all of its trading partners. So for each country, it lists every other country it trades with and the volume of trade over time. So it's about 250 countries. Uh, and 12 regional groups. Again, this is monthly, quarterly, and annual. And most countries' data extend from the 80s up to the present. The kind of data has great potential, uh, research potential for economists. Um, it's authoritative, it's long, it's consistent. It has stable data domains so that the, the methodology doesn't change uh, much at all over time. Uh, it's good, got good country and temporal coverage, and it's harmonized and comparable uh, between indicators and countries. So an example um, from the Direction of Trade um, database. So this is um, Canada and how its trade with the United Kingdom has changed over time, starting in 1948 up to 2022, I believe. So this is the, the the value of trade balance. So for most, for the first half of, of, of its, of the data we have, it's pretty comparable. Um, Canada making a slight profit from the UK. Um, then in the 80s, that takes a, a heavy dip. And then round about the millennium, things go completely bonkers. Um, I don't know why, but I can hazard a guess. Uh, it's probably shale oil. Um, it's round about the time that shale oil was started to be um, discovered and, and uh, utilised. Um, but that's one of the great things about the direction of trade. It, it, sparks, it's, it sparks conversations, really. It sparks, sparks um, thoughts. So the, the government finance statistics, um, it, it basically tells you how a government gets its money and how it's spent. Uh, it covers um, government income, such as tax aid debt, uh, expenditure by sector, such as defence, education, health, uh, it, and it's for all levels of government, so national, state and local. Um, 174 countries worldwide. Um, it's uh, an annual uh, time series data set and it begins in 1990s um, up to the latest available year, which I think will be 2023. 2022 in the current, 2023 when we upload the latest version. Um, so data on government income, such as tax and bonds, uh, expenditure by sector, and we have an example here. So um, this is the main aggregates and balances of um, 
a few different countries uh, and spending over time. It's a percentage of GDP over the last three reported years. And I think we have a question there. So, another poll. Which country spent the most on government, not including social security, as a percentage of GDP? And we've got six countries, Belgium, Kiribati, Norway, Timor-Leste, uh, United Arab Emirates, and the UK. So if you want to have five up menti.com and, and use the code 6532-4232, we'll have a, have a look and see if you can have a guess at who spends the most on government. We're getting some answers coming in there. Okay, well, um, the answer to that question, um, which is in 2022, Kiribati spent 109% of its GDP on government expenditure. Um, I'm not quite sure how they managed that. Um, Timor Leste, 107%. Um, and, and then uh, the UK was 44%. And the UAE spent just 4% of its GDP on government. So the last uh, IMF um, data set we'll look at is the um, World Economic Outlook. Um, this is... Um, this is one of the uh, flagship uh, reports from the IMF. It's um, it's by it's a report presented by the IMF staff's analysis and projections of economic developments at the global level, and it's kind of like um, a look into the future, what they think will happen. Um, the WEO database um, contains the data that underpins the um, World Economic Outlook report, so it's. It's data on national accounts, inflation, unemployment rates, the balance of payments, fiscal indicators, and commodity prices. Uh, in the current edition, there are forecasts up to 2028. It says 2026 there. Uh, I had to check just before we start. It's running up to 2028 now. Uh, and this is the sort of information in there. So this is UK gross and net debt forecasted um, for the next four years. Um, it's gross debt and net debt in national currency and as a percentage of GDP. And in actual fact, it's saying that not much is going to change over the next four years. However, we've just had an, a new um, government uh, who've implemented a new fiscal policy. So in the next edition, I think that will change. But we'll have to wait and see. So the OECD um, cover an, an enormous range of topics and goes into a lot of detail. Um, data are open and comparable, but for the most part, they only cover those countries that are members of the OECD, and those are coloured in green on, the, on this map here. So it tends to be um, very advanced economies. As you can see, an absolutely enormous um, array of, of, of data sets and themes that are covered. Um, again, we don't have all these in. We have the most used one at the moment. Uh, we've also got telecommunications and internet statistics um, because that's a, a really small data set and we use that as our test data set when we were uploading data for the first time. Um, again, we will get all these in and we'll get them all up to date in the next year. So, example of the sort of data we can get, this is in the economic outlook. Um, <clears throat> this has, um, like the world economic outlook, this has a, a degree of forward looking as well. Uh, and this is gross domestic product uh, by volume and growth. And um, I think we've got a number of countries in there. And I think we have uh, remember Germany, France, Italy, and Spain, and the red one is the UK. So as you can see, when we had shut down, we we suffered slightly more than other countries, but our bounce back was greater than most countries as well. And then we had a dip back to normal levels. So we've got a little um, follow along demo now if you want to have a, a look at this.
if you want to open up a browser, go to internationaldata.ukdataservice.ac.uk. Uh, we can have a look at how UK exports to uh, its key EU partners have fared in the last 10 years. So slightly before Brexit, um, after. So I'm going to I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to do this as well. This is our front screen for the Data Explorer. As you can see here, we've got all sorts of data sets. As you can see, we, we have got some of our census data available already. This is for England and Wales, and also for the UK in 1971. We've got our IMF data, World Bank data, and OEC data. So we are going to go to the IMF Direction of Trade Statistics. I bet that's lost. Has that lost my screen again? No, it's back again. It's back. Caught up. So we're going to go to the IMF Direction of Trade Statistics. And it will load that data set up there. <coughs> All our all our um, data comes with filters on the left, and then the data will be on the right hand side. So we all all it always starts with a bit of information about it, and then we have three little um, icons here. So we've got the overview, which is being shown. We have the table of data, and we also have some charts as well. If we go back to the, um, the filters on the left, so we're looking at the last 10 years. So what we can do in where it says last at the bottom, if we turn 10 in there, we'll put 10, the last 10 periods, because it's annual data. Then we'll click on our reference area. And the best thing about dot stat is it's really quick at searching so <clears throat> so we know we want the united kingdom if we type united in there and it'll quickly find all those countries with united in there and we'll select united kingdom then we'll get rid of that and we'll find denmark and you'll notice on the right hand side it's, it's adding these filters to our selection and we'll add France, Germany, it's got East German data in there from before the uh, reunification, we'll tick Germany, Ireland, Italy, Portugal and Spain. So our countries added and our indicator, so the data we're looking for. So we're looking for the goods value of import, imports and it's free on board. Um, free on board is the, um, the value of goods at the border. That's it, sorry, value of exports. Goods, value of exports, free on board. And it will have added that. And hopefully now we've got a data set. So I'll have a look at the table and then we'll just expand that to a full screen. Ah, I did something. I did something that I should have told you about. Uh, My reference areas. Let's just check that my reference areas are. Yeah, that should be okay. Oh, I know what I've done. Silly me. I'm looking at UK's exports to these countries. So my reference area is UK. Sorry about this. My counterpart reference area of all those other countries. So it's Denmark, Germany, Ireland, 
always happens when you're doing a live demo. Portugal, Spain. Okay, so this is the value of exports from the UK to the counterparts of um, Denmark, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Portugal, and Spain. And that's looking better. So we have a look at that. So here we have, this is in millions of US dollars from the UK to these countries here. And it's the value of exports in, of goods free on board. So that's the price at the uh, border. And Lots of numbers. But to make sense of that, I think we need a chart. So we will have a chart. And I think we'll have a timeline chart. And here we go. And we can change the labels of these. So as you can see, there's not a great deal of change. It's slightly gone down for some of them, slightly up for some. It's Brexit hasn't had that much of an impact. We can just have a look at um, customizing that. So we will will we will try and uh, yeah highlight Ireland. So as you can see, of all the countries, the one with the the greatest increase is actually Ireland. And that's probably because of the the special border controls for Ireland. There, there, there are no border controls between Ireland and Northern Ireland. Um, so trade is, is fr freer to move. So I hope you're all able to follow along with that. As you can see, it's quite easy to very quickly select some data and get a chart out of it. So that's just about it, apart from everything else. So as you've seen, searching, I will, I, what I'll try and do is I'll try and show you all of these rather than just talking about them. Share back to my uh, data explorer window, come out of full screen, we'll go back to the front page. So we can, we've got very powerful search tools um, of all our data and it's all catalogued quite nicely. So we can search, for, for instance, gender, and you'll see that we get census data on gender from the 2021 census. We also get data from the world development indicators. We then select on that. And you'll see highlighted is gender. So all the different sorts of gender related um, indicators. Um, we can also search within that as well with anything from within that search. Very slowly, because it's a live demo. Yes, there we go. Mainly, mainly census data. All census data, in fact. No, oh, no, there's some World Bank data in there, so. Okay. And you could, for instance, by country as well. There you go. So we've got data from the world development indicators, direction of trade, census, so because there will be passports held by Portuguese people, um, economic outlook, government finance statistics, all sorts. Okay. So um, citing data. If you're going to use our data, we'd, it'd be really nice if you'd cite it. Um, each data set comes with a, an overview page, and on there is a section on citation. So we have the exact um, data set that's in use and a, a DOI. So a DOI is a a permanent web address. If someone's got that, it will always go to this particular data set. Um, and if we change the 
URL, which we are going to do, that doesn't matter. The DOI will be updated to reflect that new data set. Um, we have all sorts of metadata, so the economic outlook comes with um, documentation and details on the last historical point. So if we go to that, where possible, we always send you to the uh, official um, documentation. As it is it going? That's on the OECD website. Yes, it's downloaded it here. So it's a it's a PDF and it's downloaded that. Um, we also have links to the um, to official websites if they are available, and um, any contacts. Uh, via email if you have any detailed questions. Um, each data set does have its uh, own terms of use. Uh, with, there's always a link in the um, the overview there. Basically, <clears throat> they normally say, don't, don't sell their data, please. Um, but if you need to read that, that's all on there. And when you've got your data, you will no doubt want to download it. You get data up here. Here's an icon here for downloads, and you can do it in Excel. You can filter the data in comma-separated variable format. So that's a text-based um, format or unfiltered data. You can change the layout of the data. Is it, this isn't a particularly difficult data, um, table, but if you want, you can change the layout of that, if you'd like, have that descending. Makes no sense, but there you go. And you can have names, ident uh, identifiers, or you can have both of those on there if you want. We have uh, a link to the developer API there, so click on that. This will be the um, the URL for the um, data query. So if you put that into a into a web browser, it will it will pick up the STMX data for this. And this is the the same URL. Not sorry, not the same URL. This is URL for the structure of the data for the same query. If you are wanting to use that, we have uh, documentation links here and um, a contact for the SISCC if you have any uh, technical contacts. You can also ask ourselves if you want to, to find more out about that. Uh, we are hoping to be running a course uh, next year on um, API um, query building and um, integrating that into um, possibly R or Power BI. Um, I think that's everything on that uh, particular slide. I should just reshare the screen. Yeah, I think we've covered SCMX already. Bored you with that. So, um, the future for ourselves. We're going to get all our data sets into the Data Explorer. Uh, starting in the new year. Uh, we're going to get more data. So we're looking at um, data from the International Labour Organization. Uh, they're also a member of the SISCC. Uh, and also more data, hopefully, from the World Bank. Um, we used to have data from the International Energy Agency. Um, we no longer do um, because of uh because they were asking for way too much money um so we thought we could do something better with that money um so we want to find an energy alternative to data from the iea or go back and and see if they'll do a deal with us um uh we want to do better charting the charts we've got in there are okay but i think we need to do we need to get better labels on those and, and have a bit more um, a, a bit more functionality on them. Um, 
we want to use uh, have better use of sharing to social media. Um, so we want to put a, um, a button on there that just says share this to Blue Sky X, Facebook, whatever, or send it to your email. We want to do some mapping of data, so we'll put some um, boundary data in there and, and have the ability to create maps with data on it. And also the ability to share and save queries. Some tips on using the data. Um, choose your data from the same data bank or family of data banks. So if you want to compare IMF data, compare it with IMF, other data in, in the IMF series. Um, there are s slight comparability issues between different data banks. So this is US GDP in billions, uh, as reported by the World Bank and the IMF. And at some point in, I think it's something like 2013, their methodology changed slightly. And so there is a very slight difference between World Bank and IMF. But when you're talking about billions, that, that's a lot. I think that's just about it, other than talk about the UK data service. Um, all our data is free at the point of use. Uh, we have a single portal. We can search across a wide range of international data banks or seven intergovernmental inter um, organizations. We have consistent and comprehensive documentation. We offer training, user support, uh, and a knowledgeable help desk and our address is there and i think that's that's just about it other than to say do you have any questions for me okay i think i think that's all our questions answered unless you have any more i'll give it a couple of minutes and then i think we'll wind up so um thank you everyone for attending um i will apologize again for <laughs> not having all our data sets in there it's a, it's been a, a difficult time for us, uh, but we will get back up to speed and we will get all our data in there in the new year. Thank you very much, everyone, uh, and uh, have a good day.